Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Today it's going to be Serral vs. Hero Marine here on Automaton, the latter edition from WCS Winter. Spring is going on right now. Oh, hang on. Maybe it's over by this point when I post this. Hmm. Anyway, left side of the map, Automaton is the Red Terran player Hero Marine hailing from Germany. And on the right side of the map, it is the Finnish Zerg. You know him. He's Serral, and he is blue. All right, so ZVT action for you here on Automaton. Hope you're ready for an incredible ZVT. Serral is probably, I mean, at this point, definitely the best Zerg player on Earth. Hasn't really been playing like the best player on Earth, despite the fact that he is currently the reigning world champion for BlizzCon. Anyway... So, it, I don't know. He hasn't been doing super well in other tournaments in the earlier stages of the year. We'll see if he just dominates the WCS bracket again and calls it good and then wins BlizzCon once more. But either way, I don't know that he's quite where he was at the end of 2018, but 2019 is long. And we should see him making, uh, making a show sooner rather than later. So, Hatch Pool... Hatch pool gas here from Serral, so his gas is going to be a little bit late here for the, you know, for the Zerglings, but I think that's okay. Can really deal with this early Reaper with Slowlings and Queens, no problem. No need to rush to get speed unless you're going for an offensive play, and Serral doesn't do that a whole lot. Reaper on the way from Hero Marine, really standard Reaper expand. It's going to be named uh, Sir Daniel Day Lewis. After the box office success of the Warcraft movie, um... <coughs> Blizzard decided to finally create a StarCraft movie. As part of their new project, StarCraft, Orcs in Space, they cast the venerable method actor Sir Daniel Day-Lewis as the protagonist, Jack Reaper. Holding true to his philosophy of completely immersing himself in every role, Sir Day-Lewis traveled to the Caprulu sector and enlisted in the actual Reaper program, determined to become one with his character. But will he make it back home to see his character make it on the silver screen? Spoilers, no, he will not. He'll die fairly quickly. All right, so uh, here we go. Daniel Day Lewis has joined us in the match here today, but there's already, a, I mean, there's already two lings out here. Third base is going down before the Reaper shows up. There is an SCV trying to block this off and actually successfully doing so. Wow. He just denied Serral's third base with a simple SCV block, knowing the Reaper was coming in to help. Oh, that was a brilliant play out of Hero Marine. And there's the queen. And now the Reaper has to get out. So Daniel Day... Get on out. And that's why if your speed is late, it is not good news. Now a queen has to waddle all the way down here. Oh, the drone has to wait for the queen to show up. That's just brutal. It's just so mean right now. KD8 charge nicely dodged by the slowest unit in the game. And, oh, it does go down. Oh, man, I feel like the Reaper could have blocked that a little bit more. But Daniel Day lewis he's new. He's new as a Reaper. He can't be, be, be as elite as other ones would be. So third base by Serral, about three minutes. He's a little bit late on that, but I think that's okay. What really feels like a Banshee is here from Hero Marine. Yeah, there's the liftoff. There's the liftoff. There's the land. There's the tech lab. Barracks is out. Hellions in production. Sending out two Hellions fairly quickly for Hero Marine here. It is going to be a Cloak Banshee follow-up here. We've seen so much Cloak Banshees. So many of those coming recently here in ZVT. Seems like every Terran wants to go for some of that. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is our standard little harassment here with one Reaper and two Hellions versus a couple of Queens, and the Queens are shutting it down quite nicely. Creep spread. Oh, canceled the tumor as the units are coming up to kill it. Very nicely done. Out of Serral. What, what else do we expect from this guy, really? Overlord running around. Doesn't have speed or anything. Doesn't go for speed. But tanks and Marines and Banshees. So a tank Marine Banshee push seems to be on the way here. Out of Serral. Zerglings want to get that wrap around, but it's hard to do without being on creep and having speed. The speed is there, but no creep. Additional Hellions are here too, patrolling back and forth. This Zergling really, oh, the Zergling's going to see this Banshee. Look at this. Look at that. And takes a shot from it too, just in case you were wondering. There's definitely a Banshee on the way and probably going to have cloaks. So spores are the order of the day. And by that I mean, oh, no actual spores at all except inside the main base. The natural base doesn't need it apparently. Is there a lair yet? Yep, there's an overseer in production. So the lair is done. Bailing Nest is done here too. Lings and Queens should be enough to hold this. Hero Marine is going to try to make this thing happen, but it's uh, too many Queens here at the third base. The main base has a Queen and a Spore up already. So like you're going to be able to get a couple drones, 
pretty good pull there. Some of the drones are bruised, but only one of them actually went down during that harassment. And Banshee trying to make stuff happen here. Actually skirting the edges of that spore. And starting to whittle down some of these drones. The queen's in the wrong position here. Another drone goes down. And bruising them. Killing ones as you can. Two shots from Banshee to kill a drone. Not bad. Not too bad at all there. And getting shoved away. So, I don't know. A couple kills. Not too, not too problematic. Uh, four total kills, actually. One of them being a Zergling. Up along this way here. Another Ling goes down. Natural base is happily running here from Hero Marine. Got just drones and drones and drones and drones. Sarah's like, all right, I dealt with the early aggression. I'm fine. I can drone up a million times here to my third base. I can oversaturate my third base and maybe even go for a fourth right now at the five minute mark. I don't see why not. Double evolution chamber coming on in here. And what is the tech going to be? Ling Bling Hydra? Possibly. It's got Lings and Banelings and Queens. Ah, did we see a recent ZVT where a Zerg player actually just went Ling Bailing Queen for like the first 15 minutes of the match and is actually okay. That kind of looks like what Serral's going for here. As a fourth base is coming on down, it is being viewed by Labbot1x here. Meanwhile, in Terranville, an Overseer scouts on in and sees really nothing to be worried about. It's a factory with a tech lab. It's another factory and another factory, so it's going to be Mac, which means it's going to be kind of slow, which means Serral can probably expand again if he wants to. He is going Hydralisks, though. At about six and a half minutes. And yeah, he's doing all right. He's a pretty good worker count. 69 workers here at this point in the game. Only three drones have gone down, which is not enough harassment. Infestation pit getting tossed down here too at the third base. And really, there's not much that Hero Marine can do. His Reaper, Sir Daniel Dade Lewis, is still alive, which is nice. But these Lings, I feel like, yeah. I mean, all right, well, he gets surrounded and murdered. The Banshees are focusing down Banelings pretty effectively. That's a lot of dead Banelings there. That was some nice resources lost in favor of Hero Marine. 917 losses there for Serral. 200 resources lost for Hero Marine. Effective stuff thus far. The problem is Serral's on four bases, and a four-basing Zerg is utterly terrifying. Utterly terrifying. Cyclone's on the way. It's going to be race car mech, which is what I like to call it. Sometimes it's called battle mech, but race car mech is definitely what I'm all about here. And yeah, so far so good from Serral. I mean, he's happily sitting at 79 workers. If he almost instantly saturated this fourth base. These uh, drones are going to start popping here, and I think he'll be pretty much at that point. He has so much gas income right now. It's insane. Sitting at like 13, 1400 gas per minute, which is just crazy. He is going for the fifth base at the 12 o'clock position here. And I think Hero Marie needs to start moving out. Sure, he took a third base in the meantime, and sure, his fourth base is landing, which is pretty nice. I mean, a mecking player needs to know the timings on when to expand and when to get that income, because otherwise they're going to get wrecked. And I kind of feel like maybe Serral's a little bit too passive here. Army supply was not all that healthy for Hero Marine for a bit there. There might have been some time for a counterattack, but Serral is just playing his pretty standard defensive macro style. Anytime the Terran player wanders onto creep, bad things are going to happen to him. Fusion Core coming on in right now out of uh, out of Hero Marine. I don't think that's going to be for battle cruisers. Usually BCs are not part of the battle mech strategy plan. Yeah, I'm going to say usually they are not, but it could just be for advanced ballistics, making some of those liberators five vipers at a time in production right now, and just staying on the creep. Serral does not want to leave the safety and the speed bonus that he gets from having the creep here. Fifth base going to pop quite effectively. Yeah, so we're five base in it. Going to max out here in about nine minutes or so. On 87 workers. Going for speed for Hydralisks. Going for plus two missile attack. Triple Banshee attacking on in to this fourth base, though. You know what? Getting some serious, serious hits there. Hydras and Queens are coming in to shove these Banshees away. Lings are trying to set up down here at the uh, 6 o'clock position. Hero Marine might try to expand in there, but I don't know. And Queed's holding their own right now. So Spire coming in now from Serral, about 9 minutes or so. Hydra, Ling, Bane. Advanced Ballistics coming in. Infernal Pre-Igniter on the way. That's your blue flame upgrade for Hellions and Hellbats. And here it is. We've got our Battle Mech with Liberators in the play here for Hero Marine. 
Yeah, no roaches here, so nobody takes bonus damage from the lock-on or the general attack from the cyclones, but hiders are glass cannons enough. They don't have a whole lot of HP to where they can just be cool with taking shots from anything, really. So they were forced to retreat there. Meanwhile, Ling's... Oh, that's not a wall. That is not a wall somehow, and suddenly these tanks are toast. Ow, that hurts. Is anybody going to be diverted to save these two tanks? I don't think there are because the engagement in the middle is happening right now. Abducting the Liberators into the Hydralisk play. I'm getting chased away by the Blue Flame Hellions. A couple tanks go down, but the Lings do get roasted otherwise there. Alright, you might have noticed a quick pause there. I was having some major deja vu. I cast a game between Serral and Hero Marine on this very map for my Serral versus the Europe compilation, but... This is not the same game. Okay, so I uh, apologize for the little blip there, but Hero Marine is taking his fifth base, you guys, here at, I'd say, the 530 position. Ling's running in. I'm going to force a lift off, maybe? But no, Blue Flame Hellions, roosh. Roasting it up here. No big deal. No problem whatsoever. The base does end up staying alive here. It's landing. It's ready to rock. And so far, so good. I'd say from both these players, they both got to maxed out levels at about 11 and a half minutes here. Got a Liberator setting up here in the north, getting some shots off. Did get uh, zero kills, actually. Nice control, actually. Gonna rally back on in. Are you kidding right now? And does set up out of range of the Spore. Some engagements in the middle, not really going very well. Liberator does get two kills. And a Queen, and some more drones here. Ah, only had 20 HP remaining. Queen comes in. And with three shots, does end up finishing it off. Blue Flame Hellbats in the top left-hand corner here, getting some shots off and then transforming into Hellions to try to escape. Serral's making 12 drones to replace the ones that he's lost so far, and I can't say that's a bad decision. He's still at 87 workers right now. So, so far, so good from him. Attacking up the left side. Hero Marine. Yeah, man, these Hydras get roasted by Blue Flame Hellions for sure. Liberator setting up some abducts going down here too. I think he has to sack this top left hand base, and he does. Serral loses his top left hand base. One, two, three, four, five. His sixth base is done. Hellions trying to harass down the right side, but no, there's a contingent of Ling's Banes and Hydras down here too. They're gonna head down south and try to shut down this 530 base of Hero Marines. It's a planetary fortress though, and there are some other buildings in the way, and the Hellions are coming in to help, and there are cloaked banshees chasing this army away. That is just brutal. For a hero marine, nicely done. I mean, not for him, but by him, I'd say. Great play. Great play without question. Pushing up, killing more tumors here. The Lings, the Banes, the Hydras. The Vipers getting some abducts down here too. Focusing down a couple of the Liberators. Nice blinding, or blinding cloud. Parasitic bomb on these Vikings actually. Causing major problems for them. The one that got parasitic bombed actually survived. Somehow, Serral attacking on in with his Lings, Banes, and Hydras. He doesn't care about your Liberators. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. And these Changelings are actually giving him some nice vision of what's going on down here. Meanwhile, Banshee inside the main base has six kills, but gets killed by a Spore Crawler. Kind of an ignominious death there, if you ask me. Another Spire on the way. Didn't we already see a Spire? Yeah, there's a Greater Spire and another Spire coming in. Uh, for Serral, so it looks like he is trying to go for additional upgrades for his Broodlords, as if you only have one Spire, upgrades are hard, two Spires make it much, much easier to do. Hero Marine expanding in the bottom right-hand corner too, you guys. I mean, he is just killing it economically. Engagement in the middle, once again, Serral retreating, waiting for that creep to spread. He wants to fight on creep, he really hates fighting off creep, Again, I can't necessarily say that I blame him. So Serral has replaced his sixth. Or is seventh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One of these is new. Oh, this one is new. All right, so this is the seventh base at the gold expansion. He hasn't knocked down these rocks back here, this debris, to mine it from the other side. He's just taking like a regular old thing here. Once again, the engagements are just... They're over almost as soon as they start here. Serral engages, abducts some stuff, and then pulls back. He's just making good trades. Remember how Hero Marine was up quite... Ex uh, extensively in the early stages of this game. it's Now he's up by about 1,000 resources, but in the grand scheme of things, not that big of a deal. Goodbye, Hellbats. Banelings uh, do bonus damage versus light stuff, and the Hellbats are extremely light. He's trying to attack where Hero Marine is not, and this seems like a good position here at the fourth or the third, whatever one this is. 
Banelings getting on top of those SCVs and getting some extra damage down. And the Planetary Fortress does end up getting rocked there. Nicely done. 19 SCVs killed and a base goes down. Hero Marine is in trouble economically. Did not hardly kill anything of Serral's base during that engagement. Or his army during that engagement. Or his base during that engagement, to be fair. More Lings, more Hydras in production. Additional upgrades coming on here to about 15 minutes in. Serral staying outside of the sensor tower range. And actually going to try to sneak on in and try to maybe make Hero Marine respond a different way. But nah, his game sense is too good. Hero Marine comes in and says, uh-uh. You stay away from this bottom right-hand corner. I have a planetary fortress here. It is mine. But abducting those cyclones is what you need to be doing here. Serral is absolutely making the most of his ability to abduct those cyclones. And slowly keep that cyclone count lower and lower. Bring it lower and lower. Keep the Liberator count low. Two of them effectively for free there. Just for some energy. Bam, bam. Two Cyclones. Two Liberators. Just like that. Maybe a Hydralisk died. But resources lost here. Definitely starting to mount for Hero Marine at 17,000 losses. Compared to only 12,000 from Serral. More Liberator Harass. Uh, trying to set up on the top left hand base. The six base of Serral's that he's not actually saturated at all yet. Because he doesn't need to. The Hiders are sitting at plus three attack and plus two armor. Uh, not working on plus three, but Neural Parasite's on the way. Uh, also a plus one or plus three melee attack coming in here too. But, I mean, Hero Marine, sure he lost his third, but or his fourth or whichever that was. But he's still sitting happily on five bases. It's not like he's starving for resources or anything. His income is about as healthy as Serral's is right now. Maybe more gas from Serral as he does have about a 5,000 gas bank. This is an extremely patient game from Serral. Abducting a couple tanks in, abducting a couple more tanks in. Parasitic Bomb on the Liberators because they can't move. And Parasitic Bomb does take down th that Liberator. So again, resources lost continuing to mount. 20,800 now for Hero Marine. Upgrades across the border looking better for Serral too. He is working on that Neural Parasite plus two flyer attack. At some point he wants to go ahead and tech into Broodlords. But not yet. Not yet. He hasn't started making any Corruptors. Overlord was pooping creep here to prevent Hero Marine from expanding too early. But now it's dead and the creep is starting to recede quite quickly. Five Thors at a time. Now, Thors are not what you want against Ling, Bane, Hydra. Hydras kind of laugh at your Thors. Also, Abducts are really good against your Thors. Right into that Hydra ball and it melts. I mean, maybe he's preparing for Broodlords, but I'm not sure that Serral has to go there if he doesn't want to. You know what I mean? It's oh, look, there's a go. Tank down. Lock on on those Vipers. Ah, blinding cloud on some of those tanks. Too many tanks on the ground. Orbital Command does get wiped out there, but a couple Vikings got wiped out there too. Or Vipers, rather. And some Vikings died in the middle. So the here we go. Our friendly Thors are ready to rock. Actually making eight Corruptors. I don't know, man. I... Ugh. It always makes me worried when we see Broodlords versus Thors. I mean, the Thors outrange the Broodlords with the most recent balance patch. So you gotta be careful. You just gotta be careful with them. You gotta have something else buffering. You can't just have Thor versus Broodlord and expect to win like you used to be able to. Because the Thors couldn't get in range to really get any shots off. Serral just bouncing back and forth, different sides of the map, trying to take out as many bases as he can. Hero Marine's a little bit late to respond to this one. Oh man, Serral could have got some stuff done, but instead he backed out prematurely. To get back onto the safety of the creep, and now oh, that hurts actually. Really, really hurts. Why is he making another lair? His natural base, he's upgrading to a lair. I feel like that was probably a misclick. Makes no sense to me at all. Plus three vehicle weapons, just about done from Hero Marine, which makes everybody here on the ground extremely angry. Serral trying to steer their bases down this way. There are not. Huh, how interesting. And I don't know about this. Too many tanks, too many Thors on the ground. Cannot engage into this army with what he has. 65 to 69 workers. Yeah, I was going to say, he sacked a lot, of, uh, a lot of drones to make a lot of static defense. All these spores are starting to pop up here towards his seventh base. He really hasn't expanded for a while, but making five Broodlords at a time. Getting that plus three flyer attack, which is not something you see all the time. Takes a long time to get there, is what I'm trying to say here. Hero Marine takes a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th base of his own here at the gold. Income is going to be skyrocketing for him quite nicely. Couple SCVs die. I honestly don't know where. Oh, Sarah's hotkeys were messed up. <laughs> for a little bit. We're back. We didn't have to experience that pause either. And here's your Nidus. So Sarah going for ye old Nidus networks. 
trying to break this setup that Hero Marine has here with all of the Liberators. And you know what? It's not a bad idea. I really like it. He's actually going to go ahead and expand down here inside the Sensor Tower range, because where else can he expand? There's nowhere to go. We're going to toss it up and maybe force Hero Marine to respond to it just a little bit here, using Cyclones to try to wipe out the Static Defense. Overseer ready to go, and here comes your Nidus Worm. The response from Hero Marine is... Kind of literally nothing. All right, fair enough. Nidus Worm, ho! And what's in it is the question of the day. A couple Hydras? Actually, it's so many Hydralisks now. All right, so engagement to the front still happening, but again, Serral cannot break this. The Spores are trying to fight. The Thors are getting target... Oh, they're target firing the Brewlords entirely, but I don't know what happens here inside the main base for Hero Marine. Did it just lose all of its production? What is going on right now? Yeah, I'm telling you, these Thors, you do not mess around with them these days. A couple of units show up to try to deal with this thing, but I mean, I don't know that it's going to be enough necessarily. Liberators help immensely in this situation. The Orbital Command dies. Serral knows that he's overstayed his welcome a little bit. He's going to go ahead and actually... Oh, overextending here, though. Thor down. Viking down, Cyclone down, Hellion down. Staying out of the range of the Liberator Circles means you can do a ton of damage right here. And you know what? Serral making it look good with these Hydras inside the main base of Hero Marine. Attacking into the Vikings and getting sniped by the Liberators. Maybe not as good of a play there. You might have been focusing on something else at the time, but there wasn't really engagement out here to look at. So Hydra has three kills, but he's out. Uh, should also be able to take down the Nidus and Worm too. There's nothing inside it anyway. Thunk, and that's the death sound. So army supply 136 to 141. Hero Marine technically has the bigger army. He does have the range on the Liberators. He's got the Vikings and the Thors to deal with the Brood Lords. And Serral seems to be a little bit, uh, a little bit confused about what he's doing right now. Sure, he's expanding again, all over the place. I mean, he has every available base to him, and one that Hero Marine cannot get gonna say can a viking take down an erupting nidus worm no but two cyclones definitely can that bonus damage versus armored is nothing to mess with at all yeah trying to saturate this base seems like a really difficult thing to do it's in full vision of hero marine and all of his production facilities are right near close there man once again just a lot of dead zerg here it used to be a good 10,000 resources lost more for hero marine than for serral but it's at 26 to 32 which means that Hero Marine's been making some good trades here over the last little bit. There are ghosts in the mix for EMPs and steady targeting and whatnot, but when there are Broodlords, it's hard for ghosts really to do much. Because there are Broodlings chewing them up most of the time here. Are all the Hellbats gone is my question. Hellbats and Hellion count does not look very healthy for Hero Marine. And by that I mean he has four of them, but I don't know where they are. Lings, cruise on in! To the third of the fourth base down low. Take out a couple SCVs, but really nothing too major. Just kind of force the army back here. Once again, not saturating this base at all, but patrolling, waiting for a Liberator to come in and wipe it out with a single Corruptor. Corruptor, by the way, has a plus three attack and plus two Flyer, which is fantastical. Another Worm attempts, but Blue Flame Hellbat's enough to wipe that out. <clears throat> Coming on in, Sarah wants to attack while this Nidus Worm comes up to the south. Single Blue Flame Hellbat cannot, however, stop it from dying, especially if Lings distract him. And it's just a bunch of Lings in here, so I guess you unload them. I mean, they're getting roasted. Bunch of them get roasted there, but some of them do manage to get on out. Yeah, that 8th base of Serral's along the left side was just too far in Hero Marine's control, and it did get eventually wiped out there, but here is an engagement. Actually fungling these units and parasitic bombing them, which is such a brutal combination. For Serral, I really, really like that quite a bit. Zerglings get cleaned up by some wandering Thors at the southern section. Trying to engage here. Blinding Cloud on the Thors. Broodlord's not taking direct hits from much at this point. And able to actually wipe out most of this ground army. The Vikings are getting dealt with by the Corruptors. Hero Marine not in a good position here whatsoever. Thors kind of, sort of able to make this thing happen. But now in full retreat with Broodlings smashing them down. The Liberator's getting wiped out by these Corruptors that, again, do have the plus three attack. Thor gets caught. The other ones do manage to waddle to safety to some extent. Will this one make it out before these Broodlings expire? And the answer is yes. He does happen to have the plus three armor, so it makes it a little bit harder for the Broodlings to chew on in there. 
Uh, they do have their full upgrades too, though. So, I mean, it's just basically like 0 0 broodlings versus 0 0 Thors. So, not a big deal. Four, mm, making four star ports at a time. Looks like Hero Marine might be taking into more of a Sky Terran thing. Could be interesting. We'll keep an eye on what he does there as more Broodlords are being made. Seven Thors in production at the same time, too. Hero Marine knows how good the Thors are versus these Broodlords. So are these fully, fully upgraded Broods? They are fully, fully upgraded Broodlords. All the upgrades for the Broodlords and all the upgrades for the Broodlings, too. Very scary stuff. Some Blue Flame Hellions do get into this right side base and roast up a bunch of drones here, but the base of Hero Marine is going to go down entirely. Tanks getting wrecked here as well. Army Supply 150 to 132. Hero Marine has the lead, but nothing is really stopping Serral from doing what he wants to do right now. Hydras versus Hellbats. If you can micro, you can do this, but do not let them hit you with that blue flame cone or you're going to die. He does save the base. 16 drones go down, which is a huge number. Total number of drones lost. 33 and 38 SCVs have been killed in the action, too. Retaking that 8th base on the left side. Serral's feeling pretty confident here, you guys. He really is. Creep spreading all over the place. Hero Marine, I mean, really starting to get mined out here at these bases that he is able to mine from. It's really only two. Income is about half, a little bit more than half of what Seros is, which is bad for the Terran player. He's making more Liberators. He's making more Hellions. He's maxed out too. His army supply is bigger than Seros. He doesn't have as many workers as Seros does. And they're both maxed out, so that's why that math works out. Additional Vipers in production. Additional Spore Crawlers coming up all over the place. Serral is just patiently, patiently, patiently dealing with Hero Marine here. He is not attacking on in unless he has an incredibly fortune, uh, fortunate and fortuitous position. Beneficial position, I guess, is the better word there. Sacrificial SCVs coming and join the party. I mean, that's just freeing up supply, is all that is for Hero Marine. It's a lot of Rudling spawn for just a couple dudes. Look at this creep, too. Look at this creep, this base of Hero Marines. He needs it. I don't think he can afford to lose it here. And suddenly, the Broodlords are present and chomping on your Planetary Fortress. With the power of plus three Broodlings and plus, plus three Brood Lords, the repair is good. And it's enough to actually chase away the Broodlords. The Liberators, the Thors are here. The positioning is pretty good for the Broodlords. They're not getting directly hit by much. Blinding Cloud, Parasitic Bombs, Spores hitting everything right now. The Blinding Cloud is too much. The Thors can't engage into the Blinding Cloud at all. They're retreating, they're pulling back. There are some Blue Flame Hellions and Hellbats in here roasting up some of these Broodlings, which is really, really nice stuff. Liberator showing up on the right side, wiping out some of these drones, but that is 19 SCVs killed for three drones. That is not a good trade for Hero Marine. Not what he wants to do at all here. Planetary Fortress still alive. Has 62 kills, by the way. 62 kills. Again, the Blue Flame Hellions are keeping the Thors alive. They're roasting up the Light Broodlings. Doing that bonus damage to them. Making sure the Thors don't have to take direct hits from them in general. Man, all of that strike, though. I don't know if this Planetary Fortress is long for the world, and by golly, it is not. It does explode in a massive explosion of building explosions. Lings, Hydras, Banelings joining the party. The Banelings are here to take down the Hellbats and making the Broodling removal process much harder for Hero Marine. More Blinding Cloud and actually throwing down some Parasitic Bomb up there, too. Some Fungal so the Thors can't retreat. And the Broodlords back here are just trying to rain fire down. Neural Parasite on one of the Thors, killing his friends, and that's your good game. 135 to 76 supply. Hero Marine taps out in 29 minutes and 11 seconds. Oh, what a game. What an absolutely insane ZVT there from these two players. Just beautiful, beautiful positioning. Beautiful, beautiful patience there out of uh, out of Serral consistently. Resources lost. Just again, telling the story. 64,000 lost from Hero Marine and 46,000 for Serral. Just the numbers. The numbers.
Whew. I, 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 that was one heck of a ZVT. It really was. And just, I mean, that's, that's Serral, right? That is the Serral that we saw all of 2018 versus every Terran player he ever faced, really. Just patience, creep spread right up on this base. Creep spread pushing on down towards this 530 base too. The bottom right base had creep right outside its front door. The number of creep tumors, let's take a look real quick on that one, is just 143. 143, and he ended up losing 44. So he had almost 200 creep tumors produced in this game. Which is bananas. So, I mean, overall, the Ling Bane Hydra did pretty well. He just refused to engage with Hero Marine's army unless he was on creep, and Hero Marine didn't want to engage on creep. So, there's a lot of like coming up there, abducting a couple units, and then pulling back. Hero Marine maybe roasting some Hydralisks with some Blue Flame Hellions. But 12 Broodlords died, which is way more than I thought would end up dead there. How many? 10 at the end of the game? Yeah, okay, that's. I guess that's fair. Uh, how many Thors went down is my question. 26 Thors is so many Thors. Oh, I didn't realize it was that many. 26 Thors, 27 Vikings, 32 and 65 on Hellbats and Hellions, respectively. 62 SCVs, two Planetary Fortresses, two Orbital Commands. And at the end of the game, it was 21 SCVs for Hero Marina's income, which is not doing anything to keep up with Serral's. He'd take it too many bases on the other side for really to do anything. But uh, yeah, Hero Marine held his own, I want to say. Held his own very, very well. Showed well. He has beat Serral on the channel fairly recently, so it's not like he felt like he couldn't do it. He definitely had the confidence to make it happen, but Serral was just all over the place. Just all over the place, just attacking where he needed to, defending where he needed to, and uh, got the win. So really patient style. I just feel like I should try to learn this at some point, but harder, harder than it looks. All right, cool. That is going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.